Hi everyone, this is Leslie from PlaydatesParties.com and today I'm gonna share with you these sweet little DIY flower favor boxes. They're perfect for Mother's Day, bridal showers, baby showers, tea parties, or any other garden theme party you can think of. They use my favorite party decorating hack, Cricut Print and Cut. But if you don't have a Cricut, don't worry. You can also cut them out by hand as well. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified whenever I post a new party craft or recipe. Now let's get on to the fun stuff. Okay, so for today's project, you're going to need a light grip cutting mat. You'll need the print file, which I will go through in a minute, getting that printed and ready to go. Um, you'll need a scoring stylus or a scoring wheel, depending on your machine. Or if you're cutting by hand, you'll need scissors and a scoring tool. Uh, you'll need scissors and a scoring tool for it by hand and probably a ruler to go with that. You'll need a hot glue gun and glue sticks, and you'll also want a scraper to help get things off of the mat because these little extra bits can get quite delicate. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is obviously to download the file with everything in it. And in this case, it's a zip file because we've got different file types. We're gonna look in this folder and you'll see several different files here. We've got one, two, three different colors of flower boxes here. We've got blue, pink, and purple. We've got an SVG file that has um, just the outline if you wanted to cut this out on patterned cardstock or plain cardstock. That's totally up to you, but you can use the SVG cut file to do that instead of doing the print then cut. And we have the score lines, which are going to lay over top of the flower favor box in Cricut Design Space so that your machine can do your scoring for you while it cuts, which is just such a time saver. So now let's head over to Cricut Design Space and get started. Okay, so I'm in a new canvas on in Cricut Design Space, and I'm going to go ahead and click Upload, then Upload Image, and Browse, and it'll take you to your latest location, hopefully, or you may need to navigate over to where you put the files in your computer. We're gonna start with the blue favor box, the blue flower petals right now, but the process for uploading and assembling is the same for all of them. And then open, uh, make sure you click complex because there are lots of details and gradients and things in this file. If you click simple, it's not gonna look good. Yeah, see, you see it gets rid of everything. It's not good at all. So click complex and then continue. Just give it a quick once over to make sure everything looks good. Looks good to me. We're going to click continue. Now, if you wanted to, you could just skip the, um, the SVG file and you could save this as a cut image based off of the print then cut file because that would work just as well. But in this case, because I want to print out the design, I'm going to save it as a print then cut image. You can also change the image name to anything that you want. If it's for your kid's party or a shower or anything, um, change the name there, add some tags to help you find things, but I'm not going to change that at this point. Click upload. All right. And you see it's there in your recent uploads. Uh, before I go back to my canvas, I'm going to go ahead and upload the rest of the files that we need today. Now, once we've uploaded all of these print then cut images, I'm going to go ahead and upload the scoring lines so that we have that all ready for us. Browse and we're going to click the score lines SVG file. And you'll see it's just a simple little file there. Okay. And now I'm going to select all three of the flower boxes for now. At this point, I'm not going to do the score lines just because I want to keep my process simpler. Um, but I'm going to click all of the favor boxes and insert them. And as you see, we've got error messages for every single one of these because they are 
They imported far too large for Cricut Design Space. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I design it within the, the parameters, but um, they keep uploading that way. In any case, uh, that's an easy fix. For this file, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure this little lock stays closed. And then for each of them separately, don't do this all at once because they're not, they're, they're staggered and it'll affect your size. Um, but for each of these individually, we're going to change it to a height of 6.75 inches. And then you see that the width is then well within the 9.25 um, inches for Cricut Print and Cut, and you no longer have your little error message there. So we'll do that for the other files as well. Okay, so once all of these are resized, now it's time to go back to the uploads and we're going to insert the cut lines. As you see, these import just about the right size. We're going to zoom in really, really close here, however, um, because what you need to do, uh, first of all, we need to change everything over here from basic cut to score. And then all of it changes to score lines. So that's nice and easy. But you want to zoom in really close and you want to try and align the score line overlay with the edges here. And you see here, it's not quite aligned. I'm actually going to resize a little bit. Move it up. There we go. That's just about perfect. Okay. Now I was at 450% zooming to be able to align that. So don't be surprised if you need to zoom in really, really close. But it is very helpful. Now that we know this is the right size, we are going to duplicate and then place it on top of our other two boxes. Once you have all your score lines in place, then what we're going to do is we're going to select your print and cut file with its corresponding score lines and then go right over here and click the paper clip where it says attach. You're going to want to do each of those files separately because the attach function uh, tells the Cricut machine that you need to keep the score line and the print and cut file on the same mat. And it knows to do that for th at the same time. All right. Now that that's done, I think we're going to go ahead and click make it. And you'll see it says print, then cut and score. Material size is eight and a half by 11 letter size. And um, of particular importance is making sure that you've got the alignment done properly. Uh, when you put the paper on your mat. As you can see here in the preview, the image is aligned with the flower petals facing to the right or on the right side and with the paper at the top of the mat by that little arrow there. You want to make sure that your paper is aligned properly with that. Otherwise, the cut will not go properly. Um, if you have it with the flower petals on the left, when the preview shows it on the right, then you're going to get everything. It's going to cut completely wrong. And that's just a waste of your time and your paper and your ink. And nobody wants that. So just please make sure to take a look at that and uh, be careful with that. So let's click continue. I'm going to send to printer. I'm going to send it to my Canon today. I always keep the bleed on 
just because I know, especially in delicate areas like this, print then cut can get a little wonky. So having that bleed for me, I, I like it. So then we'll click print. So we're going to select light cardstock. And even though I have a Cricut maker and yes, I should be using the scoring wheel. Uh, because it does produce a deeper and better crease. It's really not that important for this project. So I'm going to edit tools and I'm going to use a scoring stylus so that I can score and cut all in the same pass. Okay, now before we take this off, we'll take a look at all the little details. It's hard to see, but it did score everything for us. Made sure everything is ready for us to fold nice and easy. So now we're going to flip it over and peel back very carefully. You especially want to be careful. Here, I'm gonna flip this over and do this the other way. You wanna be very careful with these petals because they've got the double layers they can rip easily so just take your time then when you get to the bigger area you can just hold it down awesome and the rest of this I don't care if it curls so you can see I have printed out I've, and cut out my purple and my blue flowers so far. Now both of these had pretty much the same position with that flower, with that leaf tag um, in the bottom. But um, somehow, I don't know why, but the leaf on the pink flowers ended up slightly different. It's more straight rather than angled. So you just need to be aware of that when you're aligning things on your mats before you cut them so that you don't end up accidentally, um, if you print everything in advance and then come back to cut, um, you wanna make sure that you're cutting all the pink ones with the pink designs in the design space preview so that everything lines up properly. So when you print and cut, you really have to pay attention to all those little details. It does make a difference. Well, now that everything is cut and unloaded, I've had my glue gun I've had my glue gun heating up while everything was being cut. So let's get started with assembly. The first thing we're going to do is fold the bottom right here. To find those score lines. You'll also see that there are little dashes. They're very hard to see because I didn't want them to, to ruin the look. But if you're folding by hand, then that shows you exactly where to fold to. And the top ones, I don't fold quite as much. It's more of a suggestion of a fold. So what we're going to do now that these are all folded, got everything folded nicely. What we're going to do is we're going to glue each of these triangle tabs to this hexagon here. But this one on the end, we're going to fold up and really crease nicely. And we're gonna keep it on the inside for now because that's going to come and lay on top and keep everything looking nice. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of glue, hot glue. and just line it up. And you see they're all lining up as we go around.
And now it's time for the one in the middle. It's kind of hard to see here. I'm going to open it up this way. It's hard to see. But now you see we've got them all along the inside. There, that's a better angle. You can see all of those are lined up along the inside. And this just goes all the way around and helps make sure it's really sturdy. So we're just gonna apply some hot glue along the inside here. You gotta work quickly with that hot glue. Line it up and then press it down. And then there's this one last fold. Whoops, I didn't fold that to in the beginning. Make it easier on yourself, fold that up first. And that's going to just connect everything together. A little bit of hot glue. Line it up along the edge there. And now you can see the basic shape. And you can see it's small. See, it fits about that size in my hand. So this is good for a mini cupcake. It's good for, you know, mini cupcakes fit almost perfectly in there. Um, it's good for gumballs and small candies. So then all you do to close it up, you're gonna put your, your treats inside. You're gonna close it up like this. The ones without the petals go first. And then you just hook these together. Just loop it around and hook it together. And there you go. Cute little fl flower favor. And if you look, the swirls in the center mostly line up. Just really cute, a lot of dimension, a lot of cuteness and design. These would be great for baby showers and Mother's Day, um, bridal showers. They could be a really sweet little addition to a bridal shower. And then all you do is you can write your names on here, add a little bit of twine and tie it around, the around underneath the, the flower. Now to add the leaf onto the box, I'm just going to take some green twine and I cut extra, make it longer than I need to. Put the ends together so that you have a loop. Now I fold over the ends to get them through that little hole just to make them a lot easier. And then Wrap it around the base of the flower. See? So we've got the open loop here and the ends there, and you're going to push them through. Careful of those little openings in the petals. And then just pull it. Gently pull it. Right? And then trim. You don't even have to trim it. It's actually kind of cute without trimming it. There you go. Isn't it cute? I hope you really enjoyed this video and that it inspired you to create your own DIY flower favor box. You can find out how to get the files for these boxes, as well as a printable tutorial over at my blog, playdatesparties.com. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and keep the party going by sharing this video with your friends and family. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you again soon with another DIY party crafter recipe.